In 2020, I uploaded a video called I Tried to Beat Splatoon 2 Without Taking Damage. This was meant to be a one-off, but it spiraled and built on itself with every new strategy, every new challenge we had to overcome, eventually leading to and culminating on February 5th, 2022. Come on, come on. There's no way we fail this now. There's no way we fail this now. We're so close. We're so close. This has to be the end. Please. Come on, give it to me. Oh, it just ends? Did we do it? That is Splatoon 2 no damage. I, I want to do more stuff like this. Mark my words here, Octo Expansion no damage will happen. Yeah, so Splatoon 3 came out before I could finish that. So instead of being faithful and loving like a partner should, on October 8th, 2022, I set out on a new journey to be every stage in Splatoon 3 without taking damage. Now that's cool and all, but damage isn't as clearly defined in Splatoon as other games. But for the sake of the run, we'll count damage as getting hit by an enemy shot, stepping an enemy ink to where ink representing that we've actually taken damage appears on the side of the screen, or falling in the void. If any of these happen, I have to restart the current stage from the beginning and no in-level checkpoints do not count. We have to complete each stage in one go. And with that, we narrowly avoid taking damage in the tutorial and head for the sewer line, hoping the old man went ahead of us for, uh very obvious and legal reasons. Now, I'm gonna be honest, the first section of this game is essentially a tutorial, so we're gonna fast forward to the actual first roadblock of the run, where DJ Octavio is a bit angry that he's hard stuck B-plus in Anarchy, so we need to calm him down. Phase 1, avoid the fists and hit them back so he doesn't pounce on you. For phases 2 and 3, same thing, but we need to use our little Salmon Savior to stop Octavio sucking. Rinse repeat until we get the last hidden, and unfortunately we weren't able to stop his rage fit, but to make it worse, we called him Washed, which was the opposite of the initial plan. And unbeknownst to us, that made Octavio so pissed that his sheer force of anger was enough to break the ground beneath us to reveal the real Wonderland Alterna. Apparently, after that granular fall, we somehow have no injuries, but our belongings are completely busted. And in order to get our gear back to the way it was before, we need to upgrade it. Psych! Upgrades are banned in this run because I don't think I'm being masochistic enough yet. We get no increased fire rate, no greater ink tank capacity, just a level 1 hero shot and salmon savior against the cruel, tyrannical world of Splatoon 3 Alterna. As an aside, each stage usually has a choice of one to three different weapons. For time's sake, we're going to be using whatever my preferred weapon of choice is, as the only requirement is that I have to be able to beat each stage with one of the provided weapons. Look, I'm going to be completely honest here. All of the stages in Site 1 are incredibly easy with little to no enemies, with the major exception of only one stage. Stage 110, Deadly Dance Hall. In order to successfully win, we have to last for one minute avoiding these expanding rings. And normally you'd have about three hits before you die, but not for us! We have to jump for our lives across these narrow rings, and if even one touches us or we land in an inconvenient spot, that is an automatic restart from the beginning of the extensive minute-long timer. I spent countless, aching amounts of undefined time doing jump after jump, slowly watching the timer count down just to have to do it all over again. Yeah, it took about five minutes. And with all 10 stages in Site 1 completed, we head to this makeshift sewer line before we're interrupted by Microwave absolutely cooking the Squid Sisters alive. Like, nobody asked them to be that savage, but honestly, I'm here for it. Stages 201, 202, and 203 not much to mention. Just avoid enemy shots and get to the goal. Stage 204 puts us on rails, requiring us to destroy a number of targets to activate the next rail. This sequence is pretty easy if you use Jet or Nautilus, but because I apparently like a bit of spice in my life, I chose Slosher. The first two segments are easy enough, but the next part has this target that requires a lot of hits to destroy. This is one of the only stages I struggled on casually, and it's literally no different here. But with chat reminding me that I also have access to a burst bomb in this stage, we cleared it with little issue. And as for the rest of Site 2 stages, we conserved, we climbed, and we crabbed our way to thorough, absolute victory. So far, the stages were quite simplistic and straightforward, but unknown to me, the times of smooth coasting were quickly approaching their end as we encounter our first real challenge, Microwave. Microwave wants to dance, so dance we shall. Phase 1, Microwave has an arsenal of potential attacks that she can use. It's RNG for which attacks you get, but something to note is that she'll never do the same attack twice in a row. If she charges at you, unlucky. Dodge it because she's unkillable in this state. Every other dance Microwave can perform can be countered by shooting the eels with the black masks, but the one we want to see is 100 eel vision. All this attack does is that the eels line up and try to shoot you. That's it. Once Microwave is knocked down, charge her with the speed of a washing machine wheel, as unlike Octavio and any other boss in the entire series, Microwave will get up quickly after being knocked down. And assuming we break dance our shins in, we jump to safety. Oh, yeah, so before charging her, we need to make sure the exact opposite side of the arena is covered. As once we break dance all over her, we'll do an automatic super jump to 180 degrees of where Microwave was knocked down. So that specific spot has to be covered before we even think about trying to approach her. And no, aiming downwards while super jumping to ink your feet does not work because <laughs> the game thought of that. And for the record, Splashdown also cannot be activated. So that was the easy part. Phase 2, Microwave can use all previous attacks, but gets a new move that is unfortunately hard to deal with, Eel Whirlpool. These eels are like Black Friday shoppers zooming at Mach 12 to get their hands on the limited target deal on soap. So logically, we have to get them out of the store as soon as possible, or we're gonna get trampled over. But this attack is tough, because of our low fire rate. It's possible to kill all the eels, but we just have to try to kill as many as possible to lower the amount we have to kill in future attacks. Also, by this point, we should have our Splashdown charge. Don't use it, that's gonna be important for later. From here, she can use any attack in our arsenal, but the one that's most ideal is again 100 eel vision, as it's relatively painless. I said relatively! Again, breakdance 
Ultra Shins and jump back. Phase three, Microwave adds one last attack into her arsenal. Great Morai transformation. If only that could have happened in Splatoon 2. <laughs> she summons her eels to form a massive conglomerate that chases after you. Dodge the cluster and immediately attempt to splash down. Done right, this should kill about 90% of the eels. Finish off the stragglers and rush Microwave to finally just flat out break her shins and claim the title of Dancing Champion as we move on to Site 3, which for some reason only has seven stages. So it ended up being a short journey through target practice, target practice with curling bombs, and you are the target practice. Finishing stages 301 to 307. At this point, we now had a choice of whether to go to Site 4 or 5, and I decided to leave it up to fight, also known as my live chat deciding with a poll. Apparently, they liked increasing numbers by one, so we headed to the sewer line in Site 4. Stage 401, using the Nautilus, we made it through dodging and weaving our way through the propeller platforms to a quick victory. Stage 402, on the other hand, drove me a little insane. We were tasked with slaughtering Octarians with the Slosher. Now, that sounds like a perfectly okay stage and not unlike any of the others we've done up until now, except these silly little guys can jump, which means they're not limited in the space they can move. And instead of shooting slow ink bullets that are easy to dodge, they fire off one big slosh of ink like the Slosher, which means that combined with their jumping, obstacles that we generally use as cover don't work. If we're not ready to anticipate when they throw out the slosh, say hello to the reset button because I'm unfortunately speaking from personal experience. I found the best way to deal with them is to kill them before they shoot, which isn't always possible, like the ending just before the goal. We have to face off against four of them at once. This was the most reset heavy point as I tried to figure out the best way of dealing with them. Rushing in wasn't much of an option with them so far away, so I opted to use a strategy called Splat Bombage. It wasn't extremely effective as these guys can jump and avoid the one-shot blast radius very easily. But what ended up working was jumping to the pillar, Splat Bombaging the middle two, luring the leftmost into the pit so I at least have a height advantage, and Splat Bombaging the last one. I more so brute forced it here until it worked than actually coming up with a setup, but we hit the goal regardless. Stages 403 to 406, nothing really special about them. Just get to the end or complete the objective. Next up, stage 407. Nothing exactly special about this stage, except this guy got a bit too excited to see us. Is it? He's like wedged into the... What the fuck? <laughs> Again, exterminate the beasts and hit the goal. 408, 409, and 410 are pretty much the same as the casual run. Overall, not much of a problem. Keyword here is much. Because stage 411 stamp them out introduces our arch nemesis, the Octolings. They're only at the end of the stage, but since we're stuck on this narrow platform versus three of them who can use anything the player can use, including splat bombs, they're a bit difficult to kill, but we only have a chainsaw and curling bombs to our name. My first reaction was to keep them as far away as possible, something I like to call curling bomb bitch. <laughs> but that clearly didn't work out the way I had hoped since I didn't count for a variable called human impatience. Then someone in chat pointed out that we could potentially stand on the railing to avoid them inking our feet. And with a small blessing from Lady Luck, we handed the Octolings their caskets and told them to get in. Reluctantly, they agreed, and hopefully their spirits of the dead won't come to haunt me as we smack the goal. After taking a victory lap and drawing our little salmon savior, we made it to our next fight, Mini Fridge. Now, if Microwave taught us anything, we cannot under any circumstances underestimate this fight. For if we wish to live and prosper, we must ask our savior for explicit permission to use his underlying power to make this boss fight incredibly easy. For some reason, every dangerous attack she can perform can be canceled with the power of a light toss. But we're not opposed to that because it makes her the easiest boss in the entire run. Phase one, Avoid the vertical flicks as Mini Fridge rides around the sunken arena and wait for her to charge in. Here we use the power of Salmon Savior to completely disable any and all attacks she could perform. We'll washed up on the shore like a dying jellyfish, shoot the shark as that's how we'll smack the smug off of Mini Fridge's face. Paint the arena for the auto super jump and reverse dom her, as she might be into that. For phases two and three, same thing, but now she'll summon three whirlpools and jump between them. Wait for the mouth to open and fire Salmon Savior to cancel her on Twitter for a slightly racist post from her childhood. Because we all know if you say something bad once, you are the devil's spawn and you get what you deserve. Speaking of, the next area site five starts out with stage 501 trouble round every corner. And I don't think there was a more accurate stage name in this entire experience, as it's exactly what this one was. There's an overpopulation problem, so we're tasked with using our nozzle nose and murderous intent to solve the problem, as it usually works out. However, this time I had to use Splat Bombage, because the result is self-explanatory. We progress smoothly going boom, bang, bam, fatang, until we meet this dude. Oh, this guy, this abomination. We either have to kill him or sneak past and around, because we're here and we need to be up here. Luckily, the abomination isn't hacking and doesn't have infinite range, but wait! He can detect any movement even resembling the word fast, so we sneak swim through the halls like it's 4am when your parents are sleeping to the pillar, but oops! Moving two inches in front is too hard, so we grab a Trizuku and committed Operation Murderous Intent, but wait! The next section is three abominations on a tiny platform with nowhere to run. How? Dude, how? After attempts were made, we figured that I had to save Operation Murderous Intent for the three abominations, which meant we had to figure out a way to get around the first abomination. Like always, I bash my head into a wall and slowly swim around back where we played a game of will the bomb ever land on the pillar, which it does, as my basketball skills are about as equal as Michael Jordan slipping on a banana peel. And as it turns out, I was severely overcomplicating the solution, as I realized that you can just angle it. But with Operation Murder Intent in hand, a little bit of vacating and help from Splat Bombage, I get a sigh of relief and we finish exterminating the local population. Get me out of this shithole! After that, stages 502 and 503 were a nice stroll through the park. Nothing difficult, just avoid enemy fire and get to the end. Stage 504, all the enemies have shields similar to Big Bubbler protecting them. Throughout each section, it's a mix of juggling, getting rid of hovering McGee, and not getting hit by the enemy. Luckily, we have a lot of range with the Tri Stringer, so for most situations, we can just sit back, relax, and smack the goal. And that pretty much set the precedent for the rest of the site. Stages 505 to 513 were relatively quick, finishing them in no time flat. With every stage in Site 5 conquered, we hop into the sewer line one last time to reach the final area, Site 6. Stage 601, Bet You Missed Us, is a pretty easy stage. We grab the chainsaw and run through the fog, throwing these octolings and TVs along the way.
Just kidding, it's not that easy because of course it isn't. Well, it's true that we grabbed the chainsaw. Everything else is a game of patience. And oh, you better get good at predicting movement because it's exactly what this damn stage requires. Throughout most of it, we have to play wait till the enemies move away from the wall as they really love hugging that surface a little lonely, I understand. But once they realize that we were just their hallucinatory childhood friend, they give up and start walking away. That's our chance to take them out with well-aimed chainsaw flicks. Now remember 10 seconds ago when I said throughout most of the stage? Yeah, this is the exception. This is the only spot in the entire stage where we do not have the height advantage and my god, I did not realize how rough of a time I was in for. This upper platform only has two octolings that we need to kill to lower the drawbridge to get to the final section. The problem, we need to kill two octolings on the upper platform to lower the drawbridge to get to the final section. Using the chainsaw's flick, I tried hopping up on the platform to quickly flick both twice. Tried squid rolling off the wall to flick both. Tried observing their walking patterns, of which one moves around the edges of the platform to the tree where they get weirdly stuck and the other sticks to the back and left fences? None of it worked. Are you Dude, it, it's not even giving me an attempt to do it. But not all hope was lost, as my chat was quick to point out in the section before, the game gives us a free Operation Murderous Intended, so we were quick to put that to the test. Yeah, it didn't really help. I tried the squid roll with Operation Murderous Intent, tried lowering them with burst bombs, listening for their walking and swimming sound effects to know when they were in range, tried even just randomly shooting, but the most I was able to kill was only one octoling and always dying shortly thereafter. I was stuck. Until we had a miracle happen. Why? Uh, not that. This. Wait. I, <laughs> wait. I got hit, but my squid roll armor kicked in, and I didn't technically take damage. But by kind of my rules, it's damage. I mean, either way, I'll, I'm gonna attempt this. But it, I, I think it's just void attempt. Did I kill both? Dude, I'm really sad. Why did I get the RNG on this attempt? It was a miracle that ended in tragedy. All I could do was start over and run it back. Genuine hours of attempts passed with no progress, no results, no nothing. Just a brick wall and my head smashing into it until I randomly tried something new. While doing yet another attempt, I had a thought when seeing the enemy's positions and I hopped up on the platform and shot. Dude, that might be the strat. I, I got hit, but that, that's, I think that's the strat. The attempt failed, but I was finally onto something that looked promising. I got back to the same spot and tried again. Oh, perfect, literally perfect. Yes, <laughs> okay, oh my God, oh my God, we did, holy shit. I killed both Octolings without taking damage. This singular section took me, no joke, six hours hours of overall attempts. To put that in perspective, that's a third of the entire time it took me to beat every stage up to this point. But after conquering my demons, the final section was a nice necessary break as we played one last game of stop being underneath the damn bridge to finish stage 601. Now compared to that ordeal, stages 602 and 603 didn't even come close. Just be careful and get to the end. Stage 604 is an interesting one. We have to make it to the goal with a limited amount of ink. This means I can't waste ink on killing enemies, so I have to find a route dodging around enemies using as little ink as possible. Immediately we're thrust into two scouting Octarians. Head around the right side and kill the leftmost one. Because the other is behind a wall, they don't notice us and we wait for them to pass around the wall again so we can get the hell out of there. In the next section, because it's filled with Octarians who fire slow bullets, we can just loop around the perimeter. Kill these two bombs and now we're face to face with a splat bombage lab. This would be a problem, but because it's on a cycle, we just wait for it to turn around and smack it in the head. Destroy the sprinkler and run around these divers. This next part can be a little scary, but to avoid the sniper, just jump before it shoots. And that's the last part where we use our ink tank. For the rest of the stage, we become a messiah, leading these flying lads to the promised land while avoiding their shots. It's smacking the goal with about a third of our ink tank to spare. Stages 505 to 512 were a quick and easy run through to put our nerves at ease just in time for the boss of Site 6, Big Guy. Phase one is Big Dude combining into a giant manta ray, reminiscent of a certain Yahoo plumber game, and our goal is to split the manta ray like it's mitosis. Now this fight unfortunately suffers from a funny little thing called RNG. It's completely random each time you attempt this fight on which piece of the manta ray Big Thigh is hiding in. Ideally, we want to find him as soon as possible, since the longer we take to find him, the more the manta ray can ink the arena while tossing every cell weapon and projectile under the sun. To mitigate this, we use Sam and Savior to distract Big Arm to keep all those projectiles and ink away from us. Now there does exist an upgrade which allows you to tell where Big Meat is, but I'm not trying to become a felon, so we're gonna have to make do without it. Also, as a side note, the manta ray that contains Big Knees has more health than the other manta rays that don't contain him. Once he's found, we immediately turn around and look for the spawn point. Now, specifically in this fight, once you splat Big Legs, you jump to the same spot every time in front of the spawn. And luckily, Big Intestine doesn't get back up, which really makes Microwave the only boss that gets back up in the entire game. <laughs> phase 2, Big Mitochondria adds new sub weapons to his arsenal, as well as dividing into more bits and pieces. Essentially the same as Phase 1, throw Sam and Savior to distract and get rid of the problem. Phase 3 is a challenge of multitasking where this RNG element really comes in. Four platforms around the arena rise, making it harder to see where the pieces 
pieces of Big Mouth are located, where they're moving, as well as making it more difficult to move around in general. With the amount of pieces Big Chin can now split into, his pain output can get out of hand extremely quickly, especially while we're juggling tossing and recalling Sam and Savior with tight roping our way around the narrow edges of the arena. It's pretty much against the clock of whether you can find Big Fit before he finds you. It took a decent amount of time to get the right RNG mixed with good enough micromanaging skills. No, it's this one, it's this one, this one! Oh! Ah! But once found, I realized Big Man was less big and more small as he shrunk while flying off into the distance. And with his defeat, collecting the last treasure opens the way to the final area of the game, the giant ass rocket and the Alterna Space Center, which is split into five distinct sections. Here the rules are a little different, as I decided to treat each section as a stage, so I have to complete each section individually. For example, if I get past sections 1 and 2 and get hit on section 3, then I restart from the beginning of section 3 and not the start of the climb. In the entrance of the Alterna Space Center, all we're left with is our Ink Tank, Salmon Savior, and our Wits, which have been honed throughout every struggle, every hardship we've overcome so far. And now we get to wait patiently while Sam and Savior slowly, very slowly commits genocide on our behalf, making it to the end with little issue. Four to go. This then brings us to the inner hangar, which is pretty much a special weapon showcase extravaganza where we didn't use a majority of them. But that didn't mean I didn't have some way too close calls with the Reaper himself, but I managed to make it through first try. Three to go. The lift is split in two halves. The first is a small platform auto scroller where we're tasked with taking out the enemy. I'm so screwed! Yeah, what? <laughs> Bro, what is that? And yes, the Rosa Sprinklers are included in the enemy category. Something to note that I want to insert here is that throughout the run, I've been using the built-in restart button to reset the stage, but only while in this final sequence does the game disable that option for some reason. If I progress in a given section beyond the initial checkpoint and I take damage, the only way to restart from the beginning of that section is to hit back to camp, which takes me back outside the site one. To put it bluntly, this game doesn't let me skip cutscenes. I have to watch every single cutscene over every time I take damage, including having to play these transition parts between sections. The only saving grace is that because I clearly the previous sections, I get to skip them as we've already completed them. It genuinely sucks. Luckily, as a bit of a boost to morale, the first part of section 3 contains only one checkpoint located at the very beginning, so instead of having to go through all the hoops it takes to get back to the beginning, I can just jump off the edge to restart an attempt. But once we make it back from Horrorland, I realized the only way I was going to get through this was to use some combination of hiding, using Sam and Savior to kill or distract, and the most important thing that makes this first half even remotely possible, the singular lone pillar in the center of the platform. It just so happens to conveniently block the vision of the enemies on the other side from the one we're trying to slaughter. In total, we've defeated about five Octarians and seven days sprinklers before this platform reaches its destination. The remaining two can be killed with cautious maneuvers once the platform has already stopped. From here, paint the switch, commit casual genocide, and we're on to the second half with yet another slightly larger platform. The difference this time is that the enemies are dropped onto the platform, and with no safety pillar, this quickly becomes a problem, as unlike the first half, the main obstacle is the fact that these enemies know our location at all times, even when we're completely still. So the issue was figuring out how to avoid the shots of Wallhacks and Gee over here where there was no place to hide. After a lot of deaths, it turns out the solution was with us all along, as Sam and Savior proves once again that they're the sole reason why I've even gotten this far. Progressing further, we genocide two lanky lads before they can fire, and the platform switches directions. At this point, the only thing left standing in our way is a wave of octolings. This initially made me extremely nervous, as I was instantly reminded of the stage that shall not be named. But unlike that stage, we're on even high ground, and even better, the octolings have to jump in. Which, if we know anything from the multiplayer, you take out your fire starter and marshmallow sticks and camp that shit. And with that, the auto scroller finally ends, and we leave that place burning in our wake as we reach the launch pad of the rocket and section four of the climb. Due to go. The spirit lifter steerage has us climbing around the bottom of the rocket. A myriad of enemies stand in our path, and as his moniker, Sam and Savior did just that, allowing for a relatively easy run through first try. One more to go. The fifth and final section, First Class, has us utilizing Zipcaster to collect energy cores to open the emergency lockdown hatches. And the only risk of dying, besides the fuzzy ooze, are a total of four enemies. The first two are required to defeat in order to get Zipcaster in the first place, so that brings our total down to two. There's one regular enemy in the second segment, and an Octo Sniper in the final segment. I was left with arguably one of the easier sections out of the entire climb as my last. But just like my finals in college, my lack of information was my undoing. Uh, <laughs> can I get a redo? <laughs> now, because of the restarting annoyance of how I'm doing the sections that I explained earlier, I had to reset from site one. This wasn't a problem, and I didn't have a problem doing it in any section, except this one. Since, for some reason, the game considers section four and five the same area, and in order to skip a section, I had to clear it first. So this ultimately meant that I had to complete sections four and five both in a row damageless. But I mean, how hard could it be? I did section four first try after all, so it couldn't be that hard. Oh shit! Oh I got oh my god. It's probably the hardest segment. I jumped right into that. It is not worth it. Are you are you joking? It was. I even made it through again to section five and well. Oh my god, are you kidding? Are you kidding? So you really know I was scarred if this was my coping mechanism when we got back to section five again. Take a breather, take a breather, stand up, stretch a little bit, stretch a little bit. So it's okay, it's okay. We'll do it this attempt. It's not like my whole body's shaking or anything. Not at all. It's not like I have very severe performance anxiety for this part specifically, for no reason. I think I'm calm, I think I'm collected, I think I'm ready to go. Uh, shoot, little buddy up there. Now all we need is just to kill you, to die. And Zipcaster will solve all of our problems. Up here, up a little bit, make our way. 
second section. Now there's only one enemy in this section and we are not going to die to him because that would be embarrassing. And we, I don't want to embarrass myself. I, I would never do something like that. I'm gonna actually just shoot to get the RMG shot. Perfect. That's the only enemy here. Should be fine. Attached to that. Damn. Okay, that's all. Okay, final section. So literally, all we have to do is not die like a fool. The sniper is up here behind those crates. You see him? You see him up there? He's, he's gonna try to kill us. My initial thought, obviously, we have to start off from here. So, start from there. But I think we just go fast, right? Okay, let's go. Um, calm, we're calm. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. Just hit the thing. Hit the thing. And we'll be fine. We'll be A. Okay. Holy fuck! <laughs> With that huge victory, we made our way up the long, arduous ramps towards the rocket. And little did I know that a certain fuzzy fellow would make every small victory in each stage, each boss encounter up until this point, feel real small. Mr. Grizzis, the most difficult fight in the game. We have two phases that I'll be referring to as Rocket and Mech, respectively. Starting off with Rocket, our goal is to collect these giant salmon eggs to motivate Salmon Saber to eat the jelly-flavored ooze. Now, I had to come up with a very, very specific route to get this fight to be consistent, because while Grizz isn't necessarily RNG like Big Man, the variation of attacks he can select at any given time, I'll call his attack pools, can change based on your position on the rocket itself. And that's what we will be manipulating throughout the entire rocket section. Phase 1, Grizz will start out tossing missiles your way. Destroy them before they hit the ground, collect the eggs, and eat the jelly Ooze. Now we don't rush immediately ahead as this is where the attack pulls come in. If we ran forward, Grizz would use his claw attack which covers a lot of turf. But if we wait at this current position, because we're so far away, Grizz's attack pull is essentially just the triple ink strike. So we wait for him to telegraph the start of the ink strike animation and then go. Where we loop in a snake-like pattern avoiding enemy shots and we're bidding the triple ink strike to fall where it won't even have a chance of hitting us. Now we're face to face with Grizz and we need to motivate him to go take a shower as his pimples are about to burst. But because of our position manipulating his attack pulls from earlier, he'll always slam the ground. Back away and return to pop the pimple before he gets out his claw attack and fire off Salmon Savior. Phase 2, we distract these two Octarians with Salmon Savior to collect the eggs. Slash J, eggs is not plural because Grizz takes inspiration from Bay Wheels and starts to rotate the rocket itself. It's essentially just an auto segment until we loop back around to collect the other egg making it plural once again. Toss, eat, destroy. This next segment, we have to collect all the eggs and kill every enemy before Grizz does a single attack. We immediately call Salmon Savior and toss him to hit the middle Octarian. This keeps the four surrounding Octarians distracted while I kill them left to right and Salmon Savior finishes off their fifth. As soon as we kill the last one, we head to the right, collect the egg, and pre fire to hopefully kill this flying lad as it spawns. To kill the other, we just walk around the jelly ooze while it's distracted. Instantly do a 180 degree turn to collect this egg and fire Salmon Savior onto the leftmost lad. This distracts the other one long enough to kill it without any Octarians painting the field. As we collect the second to last egg, Grizz should fire off his first claw attack. We then reposition near the front, potentially avoiding a second claw attack to start popping his pimple. Depending on how fast I get in front of Grizz, he can perform two different series of attacks. If I'm too slow, he'll perform a triple ink strike, claw, and slam, but if I'm a little faster, he'll slam first and then triple ink strike, which gives me a chance to do major damage because it takes a long time to fire off. If that's done correctly, we should be able to pop the pimple and fire off Salmon Savior with little issue. Phase 3 is the most technical. Grizz will immediately attempt to fire off a triple ink strike. Paint, get a swimming start, and jump over the gap as we don't want to become fuzzy ourselves. Collect the eggs, eat the jelly, and instead of charging forward, wait for Grizz to fire off a second triple ink strike as we have to kill this Octarian. And if we don't wait, the ink strike can land directly on top of us, instantly sending us back to square one. Toss Salmon Savior to kill the Octarian and collect the egg in front of us. The next part doesn't necessarily need to happen, but it'll make the next couple segments faster. Grizz rotates the rocket once again, and we need to toss Salmon Savior onto this Octarian to kill them while we play the auto section. It can be difficult to hit as you only have one chance, but if done successfully, that is a free kill and makes this next part faster. Once we come back around to where we started, we toss Salmon Savior to distract this next Octarian, collect the egg, and then kill it. Rinse and repeat for the next one before Grizz fires off his first killer whale. Here we need to dodge and weave, baiting out the killer whale while we kill these last two and collect the rest of the eggs. Though that doesn't mean I don't have to pay attention, because Grizz can mix it up by throwing out missiles or triple ink strike, but majority of the attacks will be killer whale. A thing to notice is that I'm painting the rocket a lot, seemingly more than necessary, but that's because the ink collision hitbox on rounded surfaces isn't very well programmed. I can get hit from seemingly nothing, so the overabundance of painting is to drastically minimize the chances of this happening. Bait out killer whale and eat the jelly ooze. We now have two enemies between us and the big lad himself. Here we want to wait again to manipulate his attack pool as once you get too close, approximately past here, Grizzle swap his attack pool to those when you're trying to pop his pimple. If we get too close and his attack pool changes, it makes the latter part much harder. The goal is to bait out killer whale over and over to kill these last two Octarians with Salmon Savior. Once they're dead, we don't charge ahead yet as we want to bait out Killer Whale one more time to get close to Grizz so we can get some free damage while collecting all of the eggs. At this point, he's down to close range and he'll switch to his regular attack pool, with the exception of the claw 
claw attack that now happens twice in a row. A weird quirk with the claw attack, only in this final phase, and I'm not sure if it's intentional by the devs, is that the claw attack paints the ground ahead of it in no conceivable pattern. This is extremely easy to get hit by, as it randomly paints the ground before us with no reactable window. My strategy to avoid this is to pre-jump between the claws. It's close, but I can usually get enough air stalling to where my hero shot paints my feet. But going back to just after baiting out the final killer whale, if I've done all that correctly, then I should be able to make it perform a series of attacks in the exact same pattern every time. You should slam the ground, claw twice, slam the ground again, claw twice again, slam the ground one last time, and then triple ink strike, which is free damage to pop the pimple and move on to the second and harder segment of this fight, the mech phase. We're placed on top of Octavio's mech from the start of the run for a big final spectacle against Gigantic Grizz. This fight is anything but a spectacle. This 3 minutes and 33 seconds is the majority of the reason why this fight is so difficult. We have to completely pop 4 pimples on Grizz's body with the giant ink back to win this fight, but waves of enemies proceedingly getting harder are going to try to stop us. This is difficult because we have extremely limited space to work with. This mech is tiny. Specifically on the final pimple, the last wave of enemies are sent out. This wave is made up of two flying lads, two bombage lads, and an Octarian with a shield that can also dodge. I had no idea how to deal with this, as the game for the first and only time this entire run takes away Sam and Sabian. And because of the no upgrade rule, we have no sub weapon at all this entire phase. The only thing we have that can give me a chance at winning is our special splashdown, but charging it is a problem, as the only turf we get to ink is the map. This only charges splashdown to about 40 to 45 percent. The only way I could see us winning this is to somehow charge splashdown before getting to that final wave. The best I could come up with was using a previous enemy wave to farm for splashdown, and I'll just say right now, this mech phase is barely possible with the time we have. Here we go. As soon as the cutscene finishes, hop in the mech and beeline to Grizz. Start vacuuming until two enemies pop out. Eject and kill them before either of them can fire off a shot. Hop back in the mech and pop the pimple. Octavio will reposition and this is where we take the chance to paint the top of the mech as we can't do anything else while the hatch is closed. Paint as much as you can until about 3.05 on the clock. Hop in the mech and wait until about 2.59 for Grizz to swing his arm. This can actually hit us so we need to wait until it's done to get in. Where we have about 1-2 to two seconds of leniency before Sam and not Savior rushes into Grizz, which can also hit us. Octavio will reposition again. Paint the rest of the mech that we missed the first time around. Hop in again and clean up the pimple until we see the middle octo square pop out. Here we manipulate them to be easy and quick to take out. Hop out of the mech and hold backwards to bait the big one to jump, and move along the right side to bait the other two. We kill the two smaller ones and wait to back up again to bait the big square to jump behind the hatch. Hit any spots in front of the hatch and now we're onto the most reset heavy part of this entire fight. Keep vacuuming until these two pogo stick lads pop out. After a lot of testing of different waves, these guys are the easiest to avoid while giving me enough time to farm for special since we're on a strict time limit. Hop out of the hatch and wait for them to fire. Dodge to the right and immediately cover as much as you can before the next slosh comes out. We've to rinse and repeat this process until Splashdown is about 1-2 to two bars away from being charged. It is extremely easy to get hit here while farming because of the uneven nature of the top of the mech. These pogos always try to move towards us, so they're constantly moving around the uneven terrain, which causes their sloshes to become desynced. The secondary objective here is to try to only move around the first half of the mech so they don't jump on top of the hatch. If their shots become too desynced, we won't have enough time to cover enough turf to move around the mech safely. If they do, it's practically always a reset. To win the rest of the fight, we cannot stay in the segment for any longer than 120 on the clock. Hop the pimple and while Octavio repositions cover any purple ink. Charge in and start vacuuming the final pimple until you see the next wave of enemies start to spawn. Immediately pop out of the mech to avoid the initial fire of the dodging Octarians. Hop out of one side to kill one of them and hop back behind the hatch to avoid more fire. Ideally from here we should have enough time to kill both the remaining Octarians. Cover all purple ink around the hatch as we're gonna have to rush. Vacuum the pimple for roughly half a second, jump out, and get ready to hope. Do a very tight circle to the back of the hatch, jump, and splash down. Whether or not this Octarian with a shield will hit you is essentially down to the RNG spread of its shots while you're stuck in the air. We jump to give ourselves more height, so the Octarian has to aim upwards, meaning less of its shots can potentially hit us. If we have the right position, the right setup, and the right amount of luck, it should kill everything but the Octarian, but its shield will be gone. Use the hatch's cover and kill it as quickly as humanly possible. There are no more waves of enemies. Everything from this point forward is based on how the rest of the fight before this went. Everything has to have been done as precisely as possible with the timestamps I mentioned being the most crucial. Cover up any turf behind the hatch so when you pop out you don't get hit and vacuum the shit out of the final pimple. Octavio will reposition for one last time getting you ready for the finishing blow. Once the hatch opens, you need to have at minimum 10 seconds left on the clock to win. Holy fuck, holy fuck, do I have enough time? Oh, I think I'm out of time. Fuck! I was too slow! Oh yeah, that's too slow, that's too slow. Uh, <laughs> how long does it take for the ending part? Ah! Uh, it's cause I fucked up the, uh, the square guys. The, the splashdown? Or the, oh, the cubes. No, yeah. Throughout the entire fight, using the strategies and setups that I used, even if I do everything else damageless, I have room for only 10 seconds worth of mistakes. That's it. I knew it was possible in theory, because I had done practice attempts and knew both Rocket and Mech were possible individually, but I could not get a good run on the actual attempts. And it wasn't a lack of trying either. I did 27 hours of resets, practice, and full-on Grizz attempts, all of which usually failing somewhere in the Mech sequence. It felt genuinely never ending until this happened on the 18th of february 2023 at 3 50 in the morning oh, i think i'm thinking of my win oh my god <laughs>
Do you think there's anyone who's put in more hours than you in the Grizz fight? Only speedrunners. Oh, you right, you right! Damn! God. Good squares, oh, good squares, that good that squares! Oh my god. That's what you like to see. It is, it really is. Beautiful so we're going activity. to 135 this time? Uh, is that what you said? Is that what we decided on? Just uh, keep an eye on my yeah. special meter at 135 and say if it's good or not. Uh, yeah, I'll take a look. Just do 125. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I think you're good. We're on track to yeah. have enough time to win. Stay yeah. Oh, my heart rate just spiked. Holy fuck. Okay, paint behind that. Paint should behind be that. beaten. Should be beaten. <sighs> no, no, dude. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, 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 wait. wait. No, oh. I have to do this. I have to do this. Oh, do I have enough time? Please say I have enough time. Come on. Come on, baby. Please. Oh, please fucking say it. Oh, I just need 10 seconds. Just 10 seconds left when this opens. Oh, I think that's it. I think that's it. God, that's it! I think that's it! That's it! That's it! Oh. <laughs> yeah, you, well, that was way before 10. You're chilling! Oh my god, it's over! Oh my chilling. fucking god! Oh my god, dude! Oh my god, get fucked! You what fucking stupid, fuck? stinky fucking bear! And your stupid mech! And your stupid rocket! Your stupid. Fuck you! Oh my god! Hands, no, talk dude. your shit! Talk your shit! Don't stop there! Eat what the fuck? Shit! Eat nah, shit, you fucking go off, bitch! Go. Blow yeah. up with that rocket, yeah. I hope I never have to yeah. see your dumbass face again. <laughs> Roll shit. credits, oh. baby. Roll credits on that shit. With that getting me shadow banned from any future employment, after a 56 hour long campaign, over half of it being this fight, the journey comes to a close, and I can say with confidence, Splatoon 3 can in fact be beaten without taking damage. And if you want to catch these runs live to experience every hard fought victory or just the silly moments that don't make the final cut, I stream them right here on this channel and could be live right now. From here, I'll be continuing Octo Expansion until that's done, so why not check it out? What was that? And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. You made it this far, you might as well is all I'm saying. <laughs> and that's about all I got.